Hello, my lovely witches. I hope you're all well today. I am going to do a little altar tool with you because I've changed things up quite a lot. I um, the most the biggest change is up on the top here. So we'll start up there. I had to rearrange my room and I decided I, I, I had to make my Kaliach altar much smaller. And I decided to create a space for her on the main altar. Um, and at the same time, I decided I would also create a space for my patron deity, Kernanos slash the green man slash the horned god, um, over here because his altar has been in my library for a long time, but I currently have an interloper in the house. I have um, my parents' cat staying with us at the moment until I can find him a new home, and that's where he is living. So, anyway, without further ado, shall we get started into the specifics? This is my little positive potato. I may be tiny potato, but I believe in you. Go do your thing. So it's my positive pit potato. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So you will have seen potentially some of these elements on other altar tours for the Kaliach. I have some Kaliach oil and a spray from Muses of Mystery. Um, my little magic happens sign. Two candles that I have created specifically for her. And then I've got this little altar slash shrine piece at the back there that I made. This is an upcycled statue. It's You don't see statues of the Kaliak really. So I created my own. And here she is with her hammer and her apron of stones, her cloak. This is an artwork of the Kaliak that a dear, dear friend of mine, Maya from um, fin Finland. Oh my God, my brain is just not working. I'm so sorry. My friend Maya uh, sent me all the way from Finland and I love her so much. She is such a beautiful representation of the Kaliak. And then there's this little uh, shell that I have decorated for her. We have in this little moon, waning moon dish, I've got my prayer beads for her that I made. A um, little bit of blue kyanite and another shell that was gifted to me by Tay, the Kynok Witch, when I ordered uh, my custom rattle for the Kaliak. Then we have this really cool stone with seaweed attached. This is a wand that I work specifically with the Kaliak uh, with. Did that sentence make sense? My brain's a bit tired today, sorry guys. Another statue, uh, this is one that I actually found in, the op in an op shop. She was just wood. I'm just gonna try and do this without burning myself on candles that are in front of me. Because uh, <laughs> that would not be a good video. Um, so she was actually just plain wood and I painted her, but she just looked so much like the Kaliach. And I was just so shocked to find something that looked like her. So she, she was snapped up immediately and she now lives on the altar. Then this little vase, which was a purchase so, so many years ago. I have forgotten the artist's name. Um, it was when I used to spend a lot of time on the sort of social side of the website Redbubble. And I met her through there. I think her first name was Catherine, but I don't remember. Isn't that terrible? And we've got uh, some feathers and another little Kaliach piece that I've created in the back of that. This is her offering bowl. It's got some steel cut oats in it. Uh, has a bay leaf, although that's not normally an offering I give her. It must have been just something I felt like I needed to do. And then this little charm and some feathers. So if we go up, you'll see, you can see the reflection of my fairy lights at the other end of the room. Sorry about that. This is a really beautiful poster. Uh, that I love, very witchy. And then I've got my main Kaliak portrait um, up the top there with also a uh, fairy horse painting 
by another dear friend of mine, Beth Clark McDonnell. Um, another artist. Oh, I'm trying to remember the name of the artist. I'll try and link all of these below um, if I can find them all again. But that's another Kaliak portrait. And then we've got a few green man representations up here. Um, and a, another sort of horned god representation. Then we have my little Wheel of the Year plaque. Um, going back to the Kaliaka altar part, we have a little snake and a spiral. That's her sigil and another uh, little artwork I've created. And I think that's another oil. Yeah, that's another oil from Muses of Mystery. We have just my incense uh, burner here. Depending on what I'm working on will depend on what incense I'm burning. These are um, incenses that are not for a specific purpose, just to smell nice. But if I want to burn something specifically for the Kaliak or specifically for the Horned God, then I will. You'll see my little Professor Lupin candle at the back there. Um, some more witchy artworks, some from Kira Adams. Uh, there's a piece from Crow, from Margaret Inglis Witchcraft. Ah, oh, so many, so many. Um, so this is a horned god or Kernanos statue that I created. It's another upcycled one, the one at the back with the very sinister looking eyes. <laughs> Don't know why he has such sinister eyes, but he does. Traditional Kernanos and candle there as well. Um, another statue there plus this cool wooden snake green man wand which you might have seen in my wands video there's a big chunk of tourmaline there this little is a little offering sort of dish of crystals this is this beautiful silver dish antique silver dish with some green green crystals for the green man and then i have this cute little pentacle vase filled with uh, poppy head, seed heads. The vase was from Kira Adams. Then there's a little sort of offering plate with bits and pieces for him. Another little sort of wild. I'm getting caught up here in a bunch of rosemary you'll see in a minute. Uh, there's a prosperity crystal at the back there that I made. Another little candle for him. And my bell. And you can see the tops of the rosemary. And some paler santa sticks, which I will often burn for him as well so coming back down a little bit along the top of this this is a roll top desk which belongs to my father so sitting along the the top of the roll i have some favorite bits and pieces many of them made by me many of them made by friends that one's from katrina the smiling witch with the snake and the triple moon pentacle then we have another kynok witch stones some more from kira adams and some of my own and this is actually a photograph of my great great grandmother i don't really do ancestor work as such but i i just felt like i needed to put her on the altar okay i'm gonna sit down because my knee's killing me um the joys of arthritis so sorry if i'm getting a bit wobbly Okay, so oh, actually up in that dish there is my stone oracle that I work, uh, I, t I converse, I suppose, or interpret messages via that oracle from the Kaliak. My little unicorn, there's a whole lot of jar spells and magical oils in the shelves. There's all sorts of candles and incense and bits and pieces in the drawers so oh, that's my version of winter witch's mist which was originally a um a creation by earthly alchemy they don't exist anymore so i can't ever replace it so i sort of made my own and it's it's nice it's not the same but it's nice um some geraniums that were in the garden and another vase by kira adams and there's a little uh, cauldron with my chakra crystals in that I use for balancing my chakras. Little selenite tea holder. And a piece of uh, organite, a little organite pyramid. 
some more crystals, some green calcite and some rose quartz and some clear quartz and some tourmalated quartz. More clear quartz. This is, um, oh, what's the name of this deck? Is it Believe in Your the man, in your Magic or something? Let's have a look. I've got the deck book. Believe in Your Own Magic Oracle deck. Amanda Lovelace. I love this deck. Really love it. Um, I love the fact that the people in it are diverse. Uh, and, you know, I mean racially diverse, culturally diverse, body type diverse, age diverse, um, ability diverse. I love that about that deck and I, and it's it's refreshing to see it doesn't always happen so i love it the cards are huge though i don't know if you can see like you know they like it's it's, it's actually really stretch to reach a, you know across that deck so they're not the easiest to shuffle um and if you've got really small hands mm, yeah, I, I don't know if I'd recommend because you can't really trim this deck either because it is borderless, which is my jam. I love borderless decks. Uh, it's it's my fave. But <laughs> sometimes when a deck's too big and it's got a border on it, it's like, well, that's easy. I can just trim the border. Can't do that with this one. Okay. So where did we get to? Um, oh, yeah, we've got this little cauldron in here, which is what I burn my um, loose incense in. My little snake crystal ball that's not crystal it's just glass but i love it the little snake was an ashtray that i found in the op shop and then we have my anatomical heart vase that i sort of upcycled this beautiful moon mug that was given to me by um trelawney's tea caravan and that's got some feathers and some of my intention sticks in it. And that, if you are not aware, was a little video I did on very quick spell work that you can do. My flying witches, which everyone loves. And again, I'm trying to remember. She's really, really, really famous baker and witch. Is it Helen Garcia, I believe? Her shop. Um, sells them that's where I got it from and I have just pop popped it onto this Hogwarts candle because it's the right size uh, that's one thing that I find about this is you do have to have a vessel of the right size for the witches to fly around but it's very cool and I love it um, this slightly wonky rainbowish candle came from the op shop and I decided to sort of use it as a as a main working candle for a bit um in the back there you can see my manifestation box with my manifestation cards and there's also uh i don't know how easy it is going to be able to show you but there's my athemi and my two of my wands um some salt tea light holders this stunning wooden uh triskeely candle holder which was on the green man altar and i've brought it uh onto the main altar for the moment this incredible sun moon piece by kira that's my card of the day week i don't know i when i for my card at my altar i tend to just do it when i feel like it so I don't really have a card of the day or a card of the week. Um, at work, I always pull a daily card. And at home, I sometimes pull a daily tarot card or oracle card, but not at my altar. Is that weird? Is that weird for a witch? I don't know. Um, so I have a separate one on my altar. And then I've also got my little nurture vessel in the back there that I... Um, created and filled with herbs and intentions and crystals and magical things for for my word of the year um some more little bits and bobs including some of my harry potter peeps this is a beautiful bunch of rosemary that's flowering at the moment this is actually a pink rosemary um which the flowers are sort of a pinky purple color but they're not they're not the traditional blue so it's a really interesting variety um tastes the same 
feels the same to me energetically if maybe a little bit softer energetically uh and some yeah maybe that's that's partly that pink flowers versus blue flowers i have this little tiny glass dish with some of my selenite wands and a serpentine wand that my brother gave me is that focusing doesn't look like it is it's focusing on the crystal in front and then I've got another vase by Kira. I bought a bunch of vases from her recently for my altar and I love them. My little palms tree Hamza hand. And then that giant ball at the back there is, it's marble. And it's actually an antique hand cooler um, for a scribe. So scribes would, you know, be, be doing a lot of writing and if their hands got hot and sweaty, they would put their palms on the ball of marble to cool them down. Um, and then I have it's a little mugwort um, smoke cleansing wand in there and a piece of cinnamon that I haven't burnt yet. Some candles uh, to, to light things with, if that makes sense. Um, and this, this is so fascinating. It's pine resin. It smells incredible, but it's super, super messy to burn. As you can imagine, it literally, it's not like a piece of wood. This is pure resin. So it just kind of dissolves into clumps of burning molten, you know, resin. Um, so I, I, yeah, I love it, but I'm also a little bit cautious of it. It's a bit scary. Um, but it's cool and then a big chunk of tourmaline there uh, in front of my card that i pulled earlier today and then there's just a little working going on on this glass dish so that's it that's my little altar tour I feel like there's not a huge amount on it to show you um, in any great depth. So I'm just going to go over again. I hope I hope this is enjoyable to you. I love altar tour videos, but I know some people are bored by them. I guess if you're bored by them, you won't watch it. So that's okay. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, and maybe it's given you some inspiration. The whole reason that I suddenly felt deeply compelled to switch up my altar, which had very much been my Yule altar, and I wasn't really quite ready for, for in bulk yet. You will see there's not really a lot of specifically in bulky looking stuff. I haven't brought the Bridget statue out. Don't even know if I will, because I don't know how she's going to get along with the Kaliak, but... We'll see how that works. It might be fine. Uh, certainly wasn't ready for her yet. And I, I mean, the snowdrops are not out yet. So clearly it's not in bulk yet. Um, but I just felt the need to change it up. I have been re-watching old videos by Alvine Green. And again, I will link her channel. Um, God, I'm going to have to go through this with a fine tooth comb to get all the links for you guys. Um, so, yeah, I will have to remember to do that because I'm, I'm hopeless at remembering to add my links. Um, anyway, I was watching old Alvine videos of her, you, you, like YouTube videos of her um, altar tours. And she got me inspired to just spice it up a bit do something a bit different and and that was where it suddenly i suddenly felt like i needed to bring my matron and patron deities into the main altar um they will still have their own uh little shrines elsewhere as well but i think that won't be the main focus place where i connect with them so much um It'll be more of a, a sort of a shrine to honour rather than a, a working working altar space. For now, you know, anything can change. And that's something else that I really like about altar crafting is that you can change 
and often you will change the way you work at your altar, how you use your altar, what you use your altar for, um, and change what sorts of things you put or keep on your altar. I mean, obviously, a lot of my spell work is either done at my altar or placed on my altar to um, sort of go into effect, I suppose. But I also, as you know, do a lot of my um, spell work as art magic. So if it's in a book, for example, it doesn't go on my altar or it doesn't, and it's not done at my altar, it's done at my, my desk in my studio. Um, some of my spell work is done in the kitchen. Some of my magical oils or bath salts or that sort of thing I c might create either in my kitchen, at my kitchen table, or even at the coffee table in the living room. Um, and sometimes they will go onto the altar then to charge, but not always. So, uh, I don't even know what I'm trying to, what, what I'm trying to get across here. I suppose just there aren't rules. You don't have rules as to how you have to use your altar, what you have to use your altar for, um, and no one can tell you that it's a right or wrong way and you can't, don't have to do your magic at an altar. You don't have to have an altar. Um, but if you want to and you have the space, it's a lot of fun. But you don't have to do, just because you have an altar doesn't mean you have to do all your magic at it. Because I don't. A lot of it I do. But a lot of it I don't. So um, do whatever works for you. In whatever way works for you. And you can have little zones in your altar, like I've got at the moment. Kaliak zone, and the green man zone. And then I've got this little spell working zone going on over here. And then these are just beautiful things that have meaning for me in my life. Anyway, I think I've rambled long enough about my altar. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope perhaps it's inspired you to either refresh your own altar, create an altar if you've never had one, um, or, you know, maybe get stuck in and do some spell work at your altar. Create a shrine to deity, something like that. If you do, please let me know in the comments. You know how much I love to hear what you guys are up to. Um, Love and blessings, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.